All right, awesome. We'll kick the meeting off. It is 4.32. Um, start with a roll call and um, jump into our lane of film. after that. So um, thank you for putting names on the agenda. I will stumble as much as then. Uh, Commissioner Josephson. Present. Commissioner Fribley is coming, but is not here currently. Um, Commissioner Hummler, present. Hummer. Commissioner Donovan, here. Commissioner Wood, not here. Um, Commissioner Swainson Harris, here. Commissioner Howard, here. Commissioner Shannon, here. Hey, welcome. All right. So I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that the land we are on that we now call Springfield is located on the traditional indigenous homeland of the Kalapuya people. We acknowledge that the city of Springfield shares its history with the exclusion and erasure of many indigenous peoples, including Kalapuya and those who first inhabited land on which we are located. We also acknowledge that the Kalapuya people are still stewards of this land and contribute to our history today. Right. Um, so today, is it possible for you to pull up an agenda, or do I have to join this meeting and then share my screen? I can share. I just need to pull it up. Okay. Um, I don't know if folks have it in front of you or not, but it's kind of helpful to have it out. Today on the agenda, we don't have any land use applications, I don't believe. Um, we are going to go through some prior up project updates, which we do have some. Um, we're going to talk about the awards, um, maybe touch on postcards, um, discuss any education opportunities um, that might be available, um, and updates on the RLS and ILS happening as part of our um, project grant that we have. And then any commissioner updates at the end. Sound good? All right. Any adjustments or changes to the agenda? All right, I'll jump in. So no uh, public comment, I believe. Any public comment I should guess I should ask? No, okay. Uh, no, there isn't any home. That's what I see. Um, no land use application. So I think we can just start with awards. Should we go okay. jump right in? Are you ready? <laughs> do it. Let's do it. Uh, we're moving forward. Technically, theoretically, the nomination deadline is next Friday. We are definitely going to be sending a an extension. So we took we discussed today extending it until June twenty third, which basically month from today. Yeah, it's a month from today. It gives us a few extra weeks past the previous deadline, which I think will help. <laughs> but also, uh, we definitely need to um, try to actively engage people to participate and like make sure they feel A, worthy, and B, like invited and included to participate and nominate or self-nominate or nominate a project or nominate someone else. Um, and I mean, honestly, from last year, like the most powerful way to get a nomination is just be like, hey, you're doing awesome stuff. Like, can we make sure you get recognized? Or, oh my God, your friend so and so is awesome. We got to get them nominated for this award. Are you willing to just like nominate them? You know, could you do that? Like, make sure this happens and then just follow up with them. So, um, as much as possible if anybody in this committee commission has um time and energy to at least ask a friend phone a friend and convince them to um you know participate or nominate someone else like that would be amazing um because currently we don't actually have any nominations <laughs> um but granted it's you know we might have for next year, mental note, we should probably make the deadline a little bit farther out from the launching. Like this year we did it. I mean, we had basically, we put it out on the 4th and it was due the 2nd, but it seems like 
just getting the word out there takes at least a couple of weeks, meaning that by the time people get the word, there's only a couple of weeks left and then it feels too rushed, you know? So really maybe six weeks or eight weeks is the optimal like lead time. Um, the trick is if you put too much lead time in it, then it, the people just are like, oh, well, that's later. It's, too, it's, it's a ways out. And then it just like, then they forget about it. <laughs> so <laughs> finding the happy medium. Um, we've been trying to put out a, a press release every two weeks. So um, I think there have been, well, there have been two. Yeah, yeah there have been two so far. Um, and there's another one going out next week. We're going to go ahead and update the website, I think, to um, show the extended deadline, even though the next email about it won't happen until next Thursday. So um, anyhow, but if there's anybody that you're asking or suggesting should um, nominate or submit, you can go ahead and tell them that the deadline will be extended. Um, other than that, we have a great jury lined up. Charlotte is one of our jury members as a representative of this uh, commission. Uh, we also have a member of the museum committee. Um, we have a few of the previous year's recipients on the committee, which is nice because it's like they have, you know, A, they're easy to lure in because we can be like, hey, you won, now you need to do service. <laughs> B, um, they're excited about their program because they were a recipient. And C, they represent a little bit of a cross-section of the broader community, which is nice. Um, and then um, we have asked also a couple of, Kind of beyond our, um, I don't know, outsiders, like, you know, um, experts, outside experts to be um, jurors. We've got one who's the, um, uh, the Lane County History Museum uh, director, co-director, uh, Allison. And then we also asked Shannon, who's actually our consultant for this commission, but as someone, you know, beyond our little bubble of Springfield to be a respected addition to the jury. Um, and then I guess that's it. We have six so far. Um, anything else? I'm just rambling at this point. Once we, we're gonna do a really, um, a more um, clear rubric for scoring this year. Last year it was more of just a conversation and then some decisions based on the conversation. Um, this year we're going to have an actual like scoring rubric which i think will help with the process and just making it um i don't know more straightforward more streamlined in a way um and then the aim is to still um have this presented at council on september 5th it seems like the email chain got very complicated but it was always ever intended to just be a like mayor's upbeat item, not an actual council item. Yeah. But we yeah. still just need to lock it into that agenda as far as into the time frame. Um so anywho, the the response you got back was like yeah, very yeah. complicated sounds. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, there is some <laughs> breakdown there in the conversation. Yeah. 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 I'll, um, I'll try to clear that up. I think some of the challenge we had last year was that we actually thought we were an agenda item, mm -hmm. and that's where we had a hard time finding a slot on the agenda. Yeah, maybe. But maybe because we're, it's just an upbeat item, it won't matter. Well, last year, the agenda, too, it was like that we were trying to get into the agenda early because we had to just get them to approve that we were even allowed to do the awards. That was the whole right. early part of it. And then later, like trying to get in with actually giving the awards. So, yeah. Anyhow, September 5th. Awards presentation at council with a handshake from the mayor. September 8th, that Friday, um, is Art Walk, and we're going to do like a more of a fun social recognition event. And it would be great if on the 8th, it'd be awesome to have as many historic commissioners there mm -hmm. that can be there. It's kind of a fun social Party thing, down. but also a chance to meet folks and mm -hmm. say good job. Mm -hmm. Is that a good enough recap? Yeah, that's great. Um, I was going to put Charlotte on the spot, and mm -hmm. we were trying to brainstorm today, um, you know, like stretching as far as we can, like, who do we know that might even know somebody? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we could yeah, ask. Yeah, to get nominations in and start getting people, because I think these first few years, it really is going to take, you know, a lot of effort, and then by then, we have, like, three years of people who have gotten it that might help us mm -hmm. spread the word and um, create some excitement around it, but 
I'm sure there's people who are interested, but it's like you really, last year I had two or three folks who were interested, but were just like, I just can't get it in. Mm -hmm. It's too much work. So you have to like ask five people, but maybe get one person who's actually going to do it. So as many folks as we come up with. And the project has to be within the city. It has to affect parts of the city. So if it was a regional project that has overlap in the city, I think it would be eligible. Yeah. But also people, you know, a person who's been really instrumental um, in or stewardship or, you know, some, um, you know, event that is really shaping the a legacy of some sort of cultural aspect of our community, you know, um, it, it's a very broad spectrum of what could be submitted. <laughs> I think about it. I've scribbled a couple names here, but I, I don't want to get anybody's hopes up because I have no idea <laughs> if it or not. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if we ought to encourage previous nominees that were not successful mm -hmm. to consider reapplying. Yeah, we were talking about that at the meeting today, too. I think we're definitely going to reach out to at least a couple of them. Um, from last year, there were a couple of nominations last year, or there was one in particular, that, like, like, just like, like. They just emailed a name, but they didn't provide any like content. <laughs> there was no actual nomination package. It was like, we think so and so should be nominated. We're like, cool. And then we tried to follow up, and they never like would get back to us. It was very strange. So we could even we could see what that was about. Um, but yeah, there's certainly a couple last year that just you know we couldn't pick everyone. So um, that would be good candidates to reapply. Do we know if any of the local sort of school programs are doing either like traditional trades in mm -hmm. workshops or um like a history teacher that's doing amazing things I, I'm not no, I don't have any I don't have kids in school so I don't really know that part of the community mm -hmm. um but I wonder if there's anybody in that world that's really doing a great job that we could lure out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who can we ask them that I mean, Christina, I don't know how much she has her finger on the pulse of what's actually happening in the schools versus just foundation stuff. Do you, Christina San Felipe? Um, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> um, but you just need to think of somebody else. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any other ideas about folks that we can reach out to? There's a couple of business owners that come to mind that, again, because my brain is always in like tools and materials, because that's the stuff I geek out about. I wonder if um, anybody involved in urban lumber would be relevant because they do um, such interesting work with salvage um, or Willamette Window. I don't know how many projects they've done in the city limits recently, but if there's a specific project that they wanted to highlight. Mm -hmm. Or even just great. truly... Julie That's in general, general for her. she's amazing. Yeah, and she had a career in uh, state parks before she started her own business. So I think uh, that could be relevant as well. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to remember the name of that. Specific window? That would be I think it's Willamette, Willamette Window. Willamette, Willamette Window <laughs> Restoration. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did have one recent job that I know. At okay. least that they contacted me about. So. Oh. Recent. Great. Those are good thoughts. I'm thinking. Um, time goes fast. <laughs> this thing's open. open. It's so it's oh kind of like, yeah, I have to put it on your calendar. I have to put it on my calendar just so I remember. Um, the other part of that was posters and getting posters out. So I'm going to be updating the posters. So they say deadline extended, and we're going to do another redistribution of posters since most of them will get pulled by the 2nd of June, our original deadline. So if anybody wants copies of posters, um, you're welcome to, I'm happy to make those available. And I'll also send out the digital version if you just want to like print one off or send forward it on or whatever. Yeah. Um, we should just do that anyway. So that was one thing that we talked about me doing was sending the commission a copy of the poster, a little description of what we're doing, a link to the city's webpage, and it would be an easy thing to forward on to other folks. So I will probably do that within the week. Put it on your social media too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
There's like your next door account, anything. <laughs> Actually, we did talk earlier on our, our agenda for the, uh, um, the subcommittee meeting of, does Charlotte have a next door account in the Washburn district? <laughs> <laughs> I could fire one up. I, yeah, yeah. I, I think I used to have one many years ago just to try it out, but uh, maybe yes. Mason does. Mason, do you have, are you on it? Can you put yeah. it on next door? I've never posted anything, but we can. <laughs> That'd be great. You post on the local Reddit once in a while, so maybe I'll do that. Too. Nice. There's that Springfield Facebook group that my wife always shows me random things on too. Um, yeah, actually, I'm a part of that group. I should, I could post on there. It's mostly nonsense, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I had one more thing I was thinking about, but that's it for awards. Thanks, Jenna, for keeping that moving along. Sorry. A lot. <laughs> I feel like I'm also like floundering with it a little bit, but it's okay. It'll it'll happen. Yeah. Um, all right. So the other thing on the agenda that you probably don't have as much of an update on is postcards. Yeah, I totally haven't read them. I think I sent you, you have the information you need yeah. for that now. Okay. So um that's just closing the loop on um budget stuff to try to spend our money. We have to spend money, which brings us to our next item on the agenda, which is education. So I don't know if anybody had a chance. I meant to send that email I sent yesterday, I think like a few days prior, so you had more than a day to consider, but I did include a list in there of, um, I had gotten that list from Curry State originally, um, the options, possible places to attend training, start digging into those. Did anybody have a chance mm -hmm. or find anything interesting? I know there's one tomorrow um, happening. I don't remember what it's on. Um, uh, yes. Carbo? Yes. I was just, gonna, I, I had a chance to look over them. My preference would be any Oregon specific ones, just because Oregon, yeah, obviously historic preservation isn't it's adjacent to land use is how I would say it. And Oregon's land use system is just so specific that I would prefer uh, when we're thinking about it, that we go to those Oregon-based opportunities more than the natural ones, first one. Yeah, that, that's a good point. Um, I think it will depend a little bit on what people's interests are. So for example, if we wanted somebody to get um, some training or expertise on like window restoration, which we have done before, um, or like trade skills kind of stuff, or if we want to talk about like the theory of preservation planning and those, or um, some of that stuff might be helpful and relevant. Whereas if we're talking about uh, more policies and actual planning, and I don't think that like uh, RLS, like surveying and all that work necessarily varies from state to state um, because it's all federally mandated, but there might be some Oregon state specific stuff there. I'm not sure. How much money do we need to spend? Um, we have $1,500. It's a good amount of money. So, I mean, at this point we have to spend it. It's May. June, July, we have three months to spend $1,500 on education folks. So if anybody wants to like go to Seattle and go to a conference, the door is open. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, that's what we've done in the past is people will go up for a week. Um, and if there's multiple people that wanna do it, we would kind of see what seems reasonable, you know, and maybe cover hotel and, um, admission or whatever it is that we can and then there's a little bit of a cost share but if nobody else wants to spend the money I'm happy to have somebody go and get a good experience and get excited about historic preservation stuff. So that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. I've seen so many trainings that I want to do but I feel like I've already had like the good luck to do some work that was funded by or do some training that was funded by the commission in the past and then I'm also doing a lot of training in my job right now. So I, I really want to encourage anybody who hasn't tapped this resource yet to like jump to the front of the line and grab as much money as yeah. you need to like make your preservation education dreams come true. <laughs> it's great. It's gr a great opportunity. Yeah. Um, 
I was going to suggest if if we don't end up finding, you know, whatever um, trainings that people have the time to go out of town for, like, that's a big part of it, right? For me, at least, it's just like, oh, my God. I mean, yes, we can do an online thing or whatever, but, like, to really make it cool, like, you want to go somewhere in person, and then it's just, like, how do you schedule that in, and it's summer, and all the projects, all the projects. And so, um, and this, what I'm about to propose, I realize is basically just another project, but um, we could do something very local with Julie, awesome Julie of Willamette Window, and like maybe give her a piece of money to host us and have her lead some sort of really cool window workshop for us, just like a few hours could it be during a normal historic commission time period even, so it's already in our calendar. And then like maybe we get to like, you know, she can really show us if there's hands-on stuff, I don't know, you know, but like some like local little cool. workshop. Maybe she could show us, I don't know if she's got, you know, if there's a project in town that she might be is replacing a window on, could we go see the hole in the wall and like how that, how, what it looks like when you start pulling the window out of the wall and what is it, the considerations that a homeowner is tackling when they're trying to replace a window, right? Like when they're begging for forgiveness to like try to do something else with the window, like can we be empathetic and be able to talk through in an educated way that we understand what they're going through and that like, you know, what is the level of rot that is irreparable versus not? And even just poking it with your finger, like, you know, how squishy does it have to be before you, you know, like, you can't keep it anymore? Or, you know, what is what is reasonable, right? So that as we're evaluating things. And then I would love to, you know, support Julie in, by using good money for that. So I don't know, that's just an idea. Another thought, because I got roped into another thing by Drew and Tom. Um, and you might be able to speak about this more than I can, is um, Drew, our former liaison, mm -hmm. now transportation department, is working to put together a proposal as part of the planning conference that's coming to town in the fall. And he wants to lead a, like a, a walking workshop in downtown mm -hmm. Springfield about preservation and like land use kind of considerations of that and just like why is it important and or valuable to retain the historic assets that you have and or put you know prioritize like refurbishing them versus just tearing down and what's the value of a historic district and what does that mean to a downtown and whatever and so I don't know if there's any mashup there of like I don't know but it's not till like September. no it's October yeah. it's probably too late it's too late yeah. Yeah. never mind but we might want to we might want to just think if there's any useful thing could we yeah, I was at the end. We were talking about like maybe we go to Urban Lumber at the end and convince them to host us for like a little refresher, like you know, cocktails or snacks or whatever, or go to public house. But maybe historic commission could be somehow a part of that. Yeah, that'd be cool. That's completely separate. For the drinking part. Yeah, for the <laughs> drinking part. Yeah. <laughs> and for the tour. I'll go with it. But. Um, the other one that comes to mind is Dr. David Lewis yeah. uh, is publishing a book and it's coming out this fall, um, but he might be a good uh, resource to give us a lecture, kind of, we mm -hmm. can make it even publicly available on Kalapuya and settlement in the area, and it's like the first local knowledge of Kalapuya people that's been published that I'm aware of, um, so That'd be great. Maybe, that one might be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. We have a decent amount. I mean, if we think about it in terms of speaker fees instead of yeah. sending somebody to travel, mm -hmm. um, we do have a decent amount of money to work with. Right. Yeah. They have them come every week for the rest of the month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which makes me think, you know, I think there's room for both. So um, I don't know if anybody feels comfortable saying it, but is there anybody who is somewhat interested in looking at a day to week conference option possibility maybe looking online okay so there's okay that'd be great I think we'd have room if um you or if anybody else changes your mind there's still an opportunity there I'm not saying don't do it but um just trying to gauge cost-wise it seems like we would have enough to do both if we wanted to try to plan one or two Commissioner education opportunities and still be able to support. Whatever. I think the schedule piece of it is the, is the truth. Yeah, it really is going to be because we only have three months. 
and we can't, I don't think we can, we came across this, I feel like for the one that you were going to attend, did we pay for it in advance? And then our grant cycle ended, something like that. I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But it was just something like a like few that. weeks off. It wasn't like yeah. a months away. So there is that option that we can look into if it's like within a month or so. Of, when is our grant thing again? August. August. 31st, I think end of August. End of August, yeah. yeah. So by end of September or something. Yeah. I mean, I love the idea, of course, but like it's great for us all to get trainings. I mean, that's very useful to the commission and useful to our roles, which is in the city. Among, you know, in the community but also it's cool if we can double dip that into a way to do outreach kind of mm -hmm. even though that's not technically what the category of funds is for <laughs> like to educate the community as well as ourselves I love that I love having a broader reach with it totally mm -hmm. okay maybe like I mean, we could easily just reserve the wild ish and do a Dr. David Lewis presentation. Like, that'd be amazing, right? Yeah. Or we could turn it into a. It was empty. And yeah. <laughs> or, or we could make it into like a history pub at Public House, yeah. like kind of like they do at X and Fiddle. Those are super well attended. And like, also because you can eat and drink during it, like, you kind of get some casual yeah. listeners that just might not have been there, anyways. Or might have already been there. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good ideas. Yeah, um, LinkedIn might be a good idea for that. Yeah, plug and tame. Um, so how do we make this happen? These are all great ideas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um it is it would be an easier one because we just need a space. Right. Right. And would, like an AV. So. Yeah. But I'm happy to ask Julie. Is anybody willing to reach out if I give you contact info to Dr. David Lewis and say we're from the Historic Commission? We'd love to see if you're available to do um, kind of a presentation, educate, uh, training. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm looking away from you guys. <laughs> I'm not seeing if you hand your hand up. I'm sorry, I do. I'd be willing to do that. You, you do want to do that. That would be great. Sure. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'll email you um, Dr. Lewis's contact and then get that going. Do we, any preference for commissioner focus or opening it up to the public? Because we probably want to warn him if it's a public event. I think it should be a public event. I think it should be a public lecture. Mm -hmm. And we really okay. like, like he can promote his book. We can, you know, ceilings and stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Knowledge drop on the community. It'll be great. Yeah. I would give him um, maybe <laughs> options too. Yeah. Um, say we could see this happening in two formats and see what he's most comfortable with. I don't. Yeah, like whether it wants to be at the Wild Edge. Because it's his book. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if he'd want to. It's kind of up to him if he feels like he, he wants to do that level of promotion through us <laughs> or if he's got other things to keep in mind. So either way is great. Yeah. What kind of venue would he want to? Like, does he want it to be like history pub kind of right. more casual? Or does he want it to be more in like a lecture setting with quiet? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And is he like affiliated with U of O or something? I'm OSU. Sure. OSU? Okay. Yeah, he has a great website if anybody wants to look it up. I forget what it's called. He has a lot of information on it. Um, awesome. So that's great. And then just keep in mind that once uh, we get a response back, actually, if we could keep uh, Commissioner Josephson, if you want to talk to me offline a little bit as you're, if you get a response or whatever, help us prepare for Getting that rolling, we'll probably want to put a couple people together to help plan that event. Um, and it would be great if I wasn't on that. <laughs> <laughs> so if somebody else wants to volunteer to help, that would be awesome. Um, and just help ask the venue if we can host it, find a date. We can have a, information put together. We can put out a press release with the city, get poster put up, that kind of stuff. So. Um, Oh, it would actually be kind of cool to align it similar to like our awards time. I don't know if that. I'd like to have it in September. Yeah. 
It'd like at the end of August, maybe right when our, but we'll see when he's available. Like the historic commission in mm -hmm. people's minds, and hear about us over and over again. Can I give us more time to plan things? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, any other thoughts on education? Do, should we? Do we still want? Do we want to reach out to Julie, or should we just let it? I feel like we could easily drop twelve hundred bucks on a good event with Dr. Lewis if we, you know, venue and whatever. Should we ask? <laughs> I, I mean, he's typically charged me like hundred dollars an hour um, for consulting. Mm -hmm. So um, I would imagine this would be more. Yeah. But even yeah, we'll, we'll just see. So I, I can't imagine it would be. Or if it's like a five hundred dollar honorarium and two hundred fifty bucks for the venue or something. Well, we'd have to look at the grant requirements. Yeah. That always comes back yeah, to see. what we can because it's for educational purposes. So I don't know if we could get away with using it for renting a venue. Mm -hmm. We might have to ask for one of the local bars to host us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they will if you just they have a drink minimum for your event. Yeah. And not ideal, but for like 50 bucks, we could also just be over there. Oh, at the city. Yeah. Yeah. If we want something that feels a bit more uh, presentation mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. uh, food and drink. Mm -hmm. Right. I could probably also rinse. Oh, like space. Yeah. 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 Or some. I didn't even think of that. We or, could do it like outdoors in the patio at I, at the at the adult activity center. What about the uh, Doris Ranch barn? Yeah. There's yeah. some questioning there about, you know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if it's on like a weekday, like a no, non-wedding no, day, like you know. the history of the site, oh yeah, and the content of the presentation might conflict a little. I mean, or we'll it just didn't. That or <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh? I mean, certainly it was probably a very well-occupied site prior to the mm -hmm. Doris's. Yeah. Sure. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually wonder as we're talking about. Speaking for using as we're talking about some of that local history piece, it, is there a piece there of, uh, I mean, I think this event is good, but is there a piece there of, are there experts that we can bring in to talk to us about some of those elements that mm -hmm. we might not know mm -hmm. about the history of our community? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure there are. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. I mean, it would be kind of cool if we built that into our grant next time where like 20 minutes or half an hour of our meeting was just somebody coming in to talk about a topic and teaching us stuff or every other meeting is like meet on site and the hands on something or that'd be kind of cool. But, yeah, that's um, funny is it like. That is definitely the more fun and interesting topic. I feel like what we actually need training for is really just like how to operate a commission, <laughs> how to like how to evaluate planning. And like when you get one of the like, you know, a review in our hands, like how to successfully review it in a way that is like clear and objective and meets all the criteria. And that's where it, like that's where this work is hard. And I feel un under trained, even though we've had some trainings, but like that's where I need more training. The other stuff I want to do more and certainly is more fun and especially more engaging. Um, but if I wonder if we should, if we're going to bring in things like maybe it's a combination of like, you know, certainly some interesting ones. And then also like we need to remember to do the boring ones <laughs> or like the ones where they're cool historic topics. I want to like make it for us and for everyone again. Like, can we do like, maybe we just next grade cycle need to bring in, think about a lecture series or like a presentation series, like a quarterly something, yeah. you know, that we pay an honorarium for. Um, Commissioner Josephson has your hand up. Yeah, to Commissioner for a please point, I wonder too if even just, I know we maybe wouldn't necessarily be spending money on this, but just listening to a hearings official or the city attorney talk about their objective standards and building a good, I know our staff does the actual findings when we do permit applications, but 
building up a good record from our proceedings so that our so that Tom has everything he needs. I'd I'd be interested in that as well. Okay, great. And yeah, and just like a lot of like the state or the you know no, the the criteria right of which we need to evaluate those things those applications when they come in like the windows thing always just and the siding and like to what extent you want it to differentiate if it's not original but also it can't be too not original because it still needs to kind of match but it still needs to be different like really having you know like what does that mean you know yeah. is that paint is that texture is it like a slight variation but then do you intentionally make it not match but should it match but should it kind of you know like those kinds of challenges and then um yeah i bet there's somebody at um the national alliance of historic mm -hmm. preservation that specializes in that that we could also hire it might be a matter of looking for training on the secretary of the interior standards because i think our although our process doesn't exactly match to that there's a lot of similar concepts so it might be a way to you know, there are so many practitioners around the country who could speak to that, even if they don't know our specific design ordinance. Yeah, I almost feel like what would be helpful is almost like, like obviously Shannon's super helpful at reviewing these, but like we almost like, maybe it's just that we bring her in to talk us through or like, like a, somebody that we can have really refer, like we can go through our projects that we've had to go through already as case studies and be like, mm -hmm. here's, here was the conversation. Here's all the places where we stumbled, you know, and here I still, even after it's done, feel unsure about the process that we were, you know, like where the lines were, you know, entirely drawn in terms of those decisions, like how much of it was, is like really following the letter of a guideline versus interpretation and like, you know, just having really going through some of those where I feel like we really wrestled with it mm -hmm. and having someone help us give clarity to, okay, if we address this next time, you know, is there a way we could be thinking about it more clearly or that where we draw those lines more clearly of what's, you know, okay, what's not okay, porches, Right, that roof thing, the last one that like slightly what what how many inches of setback is enough setback for that new roof addition to be acceptable, right? Like those things that in the moment you're just like, uh, and the person sitting there and it's awkward and you don't want to be mean, but like also like and they've revised it five times now, right? Like somebody that can like <laughs> <laughs> Like those are the things I feel like we need like a tutor or like yeah almost like a historic commission therapist to come in and like just talk us through those things, right? So we do have Shannon under contract. Mm -hmm. It would be that's another area that she actually has extra budget that we haven't been using. So um as we're getting closer to the end of our grant, which we are, I think we still have like I think we have over a thousand dollars still left for her. And we haven't gotten any applications, so odds of using all that is pretty limited. She's been comfortable with us rolling that over into the next cycle, which means we could fund her less next time, knowing we can pay that off later. Um, and I think what we did is we just closed out her contract and paid her. Okay. And it's a little bit of a backwards way. Maybe we should talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, but the, we had to expend the money basically by the time the grant closed and she was comfortable with working those hours as, you know, the hours came up. So we tracked it all and have documentation for her spending that. What, what, why, are, why do we think we don't have any applications to review? Is it yeah. typical that there's yeah. long periods of that? It, I mean, as far as I understand from Drew, it's like when I came on, he was wrapping up, I think what y'all are talking about, it was that um, green house, that yeah, room. like right down the street here, and they were also doing an ADU in the backyard. And then they sold it, right? And they they sold it. Yeah, yeah, he bailed. Um, and that was the last one to come in. I get calls about 
well, the windows, which has worked out, but they didn't need a formal application because they weren't replacements. They were just refurbishments mm -hmm. um, and siding mostly. And technically the siding should come in for an application, yet every call I've gotten about it has not resulted <laughs> in an application. So these people are either skirting it or they haven't started the work or didn't go through with it. I, there's no way to know, I guess. Um, as far as like substantial changes, though, I mean, it would be some kind of infill like the ADU coming in or some kind of modification to the house. We just haven't received it. So there's a house that I happen to notice has a pretty substantial porch that looks like it was added in the last year or two. And I couldn't promise it was within the district, but it prompted me to kind of wonder yeah. whether that one came before the commission. Mm -hmm. Um and the only ones that are recognized as being relevant to the Historic Commission are, it's about the scale of the work, but also some previous identification that it's a historic property. Mm -hmm. So we may have work that's happening on properties that are eligible for the National Register, but have not been surveyed or identified. I think of local landmarks, right? Mm -hmm. So if they're not in the district, it's it's district or local designated landmarks which there's only a handful of i think right yeah there's like maybe two houses outside of the district and then the commercial buildings on main street are look like there's like five or something that are local landmarks and that's it mm -hmm. um commissioner Josephson. yeah this may be a distinction in search of a difference i don't actually know but isn't it buildings in the overlay district need the permit not necessarily in the landmark district is that tom do you know i think that's accurate i, I would need to look in it I, I just haven't had that much exposure to it since we haven't really gotten any applications but uh, i'll i'll see if there's any kind of differentiation for that i think the only reason, i think you're correct it's over the only reason i ask is because i doubt because if if it's the overlay, then it shouldn't matter whether or not it's a contributing structure shouldn't matter, I don't think. I'd have to look at it. I don't have it in front of me, but. I think you're right. Yeah, um, but we have maybe a focus. Yeah, I, I think at least in the time I've been here, I think all the, the applications we've reviewed have been within the Washburn and we are a much larger city than the Washburn. Yeah. I just pulled it up. And so the overlay includes the, the Washburn district and the landmark inventory, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, eight houses, including the Bratton, Bratton House, interestingly. Mm -hmm. Didn't they just mm -hmm. mess it all up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Yeah, when that was all happening, we even yeah, we submitted a letter, right and but that was never caught that they're but technically it. out of compliance. It was definitely discussed at the time, but I don't remember that we felt like we had any recourse to, to do anything about Which it. Which is funny, though, because I don't think we realized it was actually on the local landmark inventory. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. I didn't know that until now. And all the... Sorry, go ahead. I think what's being proposed is good, whether or not we have the opportunity to review mm -hmm. an active application or not. It's mm -hmm. going to be giving us practical skills mm -hmm. that we'll be able to use at some point in the future. Uh, and I think it's important that everybody here have an opportunity to, you know, see what the process is like. Yeah. So ideally, we would be live, but if we can't have live, we can certainly dust something off that would work. I think it's interesting to review the old ones just because they were a struggle at the time. And those were, there were like a few that were before we had contracted with Shannon, basically, where, right? Like, and we were like, it just felt like we were, well, A, like, like the owners came in and we hadn't really. It was the process. Was yeah, it was it? the process. And we were just kind of like confronted with it without having full time to study it. But then, and then they're asking us these very particular questions and like feeling like we're basically the history police. And, you know, it was, very stressful. <laughs> and the greenhouse was more recently for sale on, is it C Street? I went to the open house and did not 
disclose that I was with the Historic Commission and the things that the agent said about the Historic Commission were wild. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Just a lots of, you know, implication and, and just outright statements about how we we messed up the, the process and how things can't be done in the House because of the commission. And it's, you know, it, it didn't quite tip into the like absolutely crazy but it was it was kind of frustrating to listen to and I figured it's it's a reflection of what happens when the process is clunky even if we did our best through the process it's so hard to kind of build rapport and so easy to lose it mm -hmm. whether it's deserved or not mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. And the owner at that time of that house, because I was in the final meeting with Drew, mm -hmm. and he was showing his uh, displease with the whole process, but he admittedly stated that he had never done work, or this was like his first house that he bought in a historic district, and, you know, there's the people that get these in either it's their plan to begin with, or it's their plan after the fact to flip it, and then you know, their costs skyrocket because then it's now historic and then they'll automatically not have good things to say about it. Mm -hmm. and then he just up and, you know, listed it and left. Mm -hmm. so. He was also trying to do a very, like, large intervention on that yeah. house. It's not like he was just trying yeah. to, like, remodel it. Right, right. Like, it was a full blow. Yeah. Project. He was adding all these pieces on it. Like, yeah. I remember also we reviewed an application a few years ago for um, a really small house on, I want to say F Street, but I could be wrong about that. Part of the conversation that the that the property owners brought to us is that when they bought the house, they were a small family and their family has grown and now the house is too small. And so they wanted to build additions. And it's, um, I feel like it was one of those examples where we didn't want to be the bad guy, but you buy a small house in a historic district, when you when your family was that size, you probably were glad to be able to buy a house of that scale. And if you've out, you know, if you've outgrown that house, you can't just build huge additions that are larger than the scale of the original property. Um, I just, I think they probably left disappointed because I don't think we gave them a lot to work with um, to achieve their goals. And yeah, it's hard because when the definition of the historic integrity of some of those small houses is, is that, the they're fact small. that they're small mm -hmm. is part of why it's significant because it's representative of why they're built that way. Mm -hmm. Um, I just hope that when people do rent or buy, especially buy in the neighborhood, that they have good information about what can and can't be done. Because um, again, being in one of the, the open houses recently, it was also interesting to hear what potential buyers were asking of their agents. And common question was like, can we repaint it? And the agent's answer was, I'm not sure you'd have to check with the historic commission. And I wish every agent who was working in the Washburn would just say, no, you can pick your color. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. Do we have any like re sorry resource for real estate agents? Like, I mean, our agent when we bought our house had zero information for us. I like did a little research online just to see what we were getting into, but like it like we we had talked about putting a fence around the front, and I was like, I wonder if you can do that, or like I. But our agent had absolutely no information on it. Well, that's one of the designated audiences for the postcard. We mailed them to every single real estate agent in Eugene and Springfield through their mailing like list. And we dropped extra copies at the realtor's office so they could have take stacks of them too when they had open houses and listings in the district. And maybe I just need to follow up with the board of realtors too and be like, hey, are those hiding under a in a table in a closet somewhere? Do you still have those? Does your what you know the postcard know? say? Like, here's a brief summary of what can and can't. It basically says, like, buying into the district is a responsibility, you know, and it's targeted towards homeowners and real estate agencies mm -hmm. on, on the back. It really is. It's like, you know, it's an awesome opportunity. This is a great neighborhood, but it also comes with a lot of responsibilities. You know, you, here are some resources, you know, mm -hmm. for information and that kind of stuff. I mean, I was alarmed at, like, how little of the historical information our agent had on like this house was like kind of concerning like after we bought it and moved in and like started learning more we were like oh wow this is like a really like important house in the like historic <laughs> like community and like we didn't didn't have the information on that which was strange but 
that's that's on her, I guess. But it was just interesting. Hey, you think she'd want to use that as a selling point? But... Yeah, that's. I guess that was my point. Like I was like, but I don't know. It was a whole. It was a really strange experience. And like our our agent, like, was just like thought the house was super overpriced, and it was pretty clear, and it was just like a generally pretty bad experience. But <laughs> we got through it. We wanted the house, so we just dealt with it and figured it out. I recently went through the experience of getting an appraisal report on a historic property I was interested in buying. And the it's made me think that appraisals, appraisal reports are completely useless if you're looking at a property with any history. Mm -hmm. Like it's just such an uninformed, like garbage opinion of the qualities that make the property valuable. <laughs> Um, so anyway, maybe we're going too far off the agenda at this point. I think that was the same uh, with the house too, honestly. It was like, it wasn't factored into it at all. And, and what the appraisals flag really motivate people to flip, um, which is really not good from a preservation perspective. We were told if you buy the property, you need to immediately put paint over the wood floors to encapsulate any peeling paint. What? Because um, of uh, lead? Just, just to be safe in case there, yeah, in case there could be lead or history might sleep out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this does bring up an interesting, completely different direction of conversation, potentially, of like, you know, with the idea of doing like some educational, like, you know, presentations or lectures or whatever. I wonder if it would be worth the commission, us going to one of like the realtors groups have you know big meetings of their memberships like should would it be worthy for us to go and give a like quick you know 10 minute spiel about like the washburn district and you know yeah. try to educate them a little bit about it yeah, yeah. they recently requested mark russ to oh, yeah. come or one of us from the yeah. office to come educate them on adus yeah so we do the same thing i I think it's very pertinent mm -hmm. as far as mm -hmm. houses being bought and sold in the district. So. Well, okay. Has he already done? Yeah. You uh, I think it's scheduled. I think that's maybe you, you might also uh, the Springfield City Club. They, mm -hmm. you know, normally have a you know, what uh, at least one meeting a year, a month, and uh, where a presentation on the Washburn District might be helpful. Yeah, I'm the presenter next week. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, uh, um, yeah, all good ideas. So I'm going to keep this moving along here. Um, but things I heard is um, we want to do some education. We have $1,500. We have three months. Mm -hmm. um, so folks, if you want to bring a proposal <laughs> or send a proposal for any uh, training you're interested in, please try to get that together in the next month if possible. Um, so we kind of know what our budget is to work with. Um, in the meantime, if Commissioner Josephson will reach out to David Lewis and see if we can um, get a sense for how much it would cost and what type of venue he would prefer. Um, and then um, we can move forward on that. If we have additional money, we'll bring Julian to do a training with us. Another option for training that we could do regardless of our training budget, because we could also bring Shannon in. I think she could probably be somebody that we could workshop with a little bit initially, and we could do more later if we wanted, but because we have her on contract, it would be really easy to have her. She lives in Idaho now. So. Yeah, I mean, even just by Zoom. Just be. by Zoom, but she has experience in Cottage Grove, like local Eugene, Cottage Grove, and us, and probably a one or two other groups where she could bring specific projects that are local and help us see how those groups worked through them. And um, we could pull old ones if we can find them. We've always had a hard time finding records yeah. of some yeah, of our old that's been so challenging. Um, applications. So depending on how those are available, if we can find any of those. We should be, the city should probably have that stuff if we wanted to pull yeah, it out. There's probably one way or another to pull them. See what I can do. But, yeah, does that sound good? So um, I will aim for, let's try to aim for May, June, July, um, the July or August deadline, uh, timeline for like a, a group training. Does anybody have any significant times that they're gone? 
in July or August I'm that you want to go in July. You're going to all July? Um, not all of July, but like the first half of July. Okay, so later July is good for you. Later July is okay. So. Are we aiming for the actual presentation or whatever? Just trying to get a window. Yeah. So like, yeah, thinking about a, if the historic commission were to meet and have a presentation. Yeah, a presentation either for the all public or just for us. So it seems like, like it's already June, basically. <laughs> yeah. So maybe August would make more sense. <laughs> yeah. So maybe okay. August would be an easier target. Yeah. Is that okay? <laughs> Everybody opposed with in August, but we have to have the money spent by end of August. So mm -hmm. even if we have to pay the consultant. Okay, so I know on at your presentation at the Realtors, do you think you could like take some postcards and uh, yeah. and then like at the very end just like hijack that thing and talk for like two seconds about the Washburn district? You can go. <laughs> just remind them that exists and like that there's postcards there somewhere in their office. Yeah, and they should take them. <laughs> take them to each person individually and put them in, your, in their hand. So, yeah, this website's great. I mean, I think we put like 5,000 postcards or maybe 2,000 postcards. We put a lot of postcards in a box at their place so that they could take them to open houses and stuff. Like, does this look familiar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, all right, moving along. We let that one go, but that was good because we haven't done that in a while. <laughs> Um, handbook and commissioner guidelines. I think uh, Commissioner Josephson, that one's still on hold, right? With yeah, pretty Commissioner. much. Uh, just an update on that. I did meet with Mary Bridget Smith, and we discussed kind of the differences of going guidelines and bylaws. Okay. Yeah, she did say it is a highly political process. It would require council approval if we went with bylaws. Uh, she mentioned bylaws are kind of antiquated, which I didn't really understand what she meant by that. Um, our bylaws or bylaws? In just bylaws in general, I guess. Um, she did also say uh, there we have some in the Muni Code right now, which I think that's what we were looking at as being kind of deficient and not really explaining the purpose or how we function. Um, they couldn't be duplicative of what's already there. So we would have to have some kind of like substantial change is what I got from that. Mm -hmm. um, or else it's just basically what's already there. Uh, and then it would also, um, as we kind of already discussed internally, it would be not as flexible as having guidelines. But in the future, if anything wanted to be changed as the commission evolves, it would also take approvals, you know, more council approval to change those in the future. So as far as being more binding or less binding, depending on how, you know, whichever way y'all want to take it, I'm kind of abstained from the topic. So. Commissioner Josephson. Yeah, my my preference would still be bylaws. I I get very worried. I, I know there's stuff in the city code. I think there's also stuff in the charter about us. And I get very worried when there are groups like us who have you know, like a, a valiant staff member like Tom. And we have all of these we have all these powers that we don't regularly utilize just hanging out there I it that honestly scares me that the idea that we might accept property on behalf of the city and not have in front of us some kind of guideline on how we do that is is problematic for me personally and so I would still prefer knowing that it's binding uh, to have those binding rules so that both we don't do things we're not supposed to and we have the ability to exercise those powers that have been given to us. Mm -hmm. Good point, yeah. Is it possible for us to, it, because I certainly understand the concern about bylaws perhaps being quite inflexible, mm -hmm. but is it possible for us for some of these things like the issue that Commissioner Josephson raised of um, obviously there to be pretty significant process around accepting property? <laughs> 
right. um, for us to pick some of these things that really don't seem like they need flexibility and put those in more of bylaws while keeping some of the things that people want to be flexible in a, in a guidelines area? I don't see why not. I mean, I yeah. check with legal on that. My have both bylaws and guidelines. Right. Um, and I, I, the other thing that this brings up, like what this commissioner just was saying, that the um, whole land acquisition thing is problematic in general. Um, and I think that is an outdated function of our commission that I don't know why it was included in the code to begin with, but I imagine, and I don't know this, but there are other laws requirements about land acquisition for the city that would probably prohibit us from actually acquiring land to begin with or make it very challenging um, in certain ways. So um, I would love to have a conversation with legal about what that actually means at some point. But I think the reality is we're not, none of us, I can't imagine anybody would want to do that. <laughs> I take that liability or responsibility on. And it's actually um, problematic for the city. Um, so they should be the ones that are actually wanting to update the code itself to reflect that. Um, but there has been, since I've been on, no desire or um, pushing from the city's side to have that revised. And so it still lays there and exists. So I don't know if we want to push and open that can of worms. It doesn't really impact the work that we do. It's mostly for the benefit of the city to remove that risk, really, that exists for them. Um, but in the meantime, none of us are jumping to take advantage of this power that we have. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, like I said, the, the language is there. So if the event ever arised that we found or had some kind of land or what an asset, let's call right. it, to be gifted to us one way or another, mm -hmm. I would think the first step would then be, as a commission, go to the city to say, okay, this, this is in our bylaws, now how do we do it? Right. And I think the city would have that more established just in the general code rather than specifically how does the historic commission accept land it says we can but i think it could be more so up to the city as to how mm -hmm. which i think is what you're saying yeah yeah um i think it goes back to because the historic commission like was implement like they implemented the museum or the yeah the history museum could i wonder if it could have related to that somehow like Right, it could have. But I, I feel like the city owned the building. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not seeing the harm that, or the, I mean, we have, a, we have a lot of things we could spend our time on, and this one, it doesn't seem like it's going to have any immediate impact on the, the community. I mean, it manages risk, but I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't feel that it's our responsibility to change that, but I am, uh, yeah, it's also not my area of expertise. I'm willing to go down the bylaws route. It sounded like from what you had, the way you had described it, Mary Britton, Bridget, Bridget. <laughs> Mary Bridget had said was, was strongly recommending against it. Yes. And and in part because she doesn't want to have duplicative, like various different bylaws or regulations that relate to how we function because it's not clean process for her. Um, but if we did propose the bylaws um, and we talked about focusing those on how we would manage land acquisition, I have a feeling that would maybe force thing <laughs> a little bit to go like wait wait are we going to spend time on this because and this really that's what i led off thing. with was like the main reason why we were interested in doing that yeah was the land acquisition like yeah it doesn't really spell it out so how do we make it clearer right but maybe it is that way specifically because it's the city's job so I don't know. did she say anything in relation to that like Wait, did she know that we could acquire? No. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Okay. Yeah. The other thing that I do think about besides the land, because I think the land is like, that's kind of a, not, it's, as we've talked about, since I've been here, it's happened once that someone has solicited us to take some land and it went as exactly as Commissioner Helmer said, we just, we went to the city attorney and said, can we even do this? The city attorney said, no, it's not all in the UGB. And so that was that. Um, but the other thing I do think about is the uh, making review and recommendations to during quasi-judicial matters, which is the last function, which is like our historic review function. I, we talked a lot today about how we don't really feel like how that process has flexed a lot over time. Um, and I do, I do wonder from like a, having decisions upheld, if there is something to saying, oh, here's our process so that no one can say, oh, well, we were prejudiced because the process wasn't clear. So that we could, we could not clearly go through our review process because there wasn't a process outlined. Mm -hmm clear and objective right and is that something that do you think bylaws is better at achieving than guidelines would be uh probably because if we can just deviate from it like i guess my my bigger thing would be like if the planning commit we're supposed to make recommendations to the planning commission if there's stuff that impacts historic properties the city council i don't know that and the city council, or either staff, one. Just the staff. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, the historic. So it says the historic commission shall review and make recommendations to the planning commission, <laughs> hearings officer, and or council concerning quasi judicial decisions or legislative recommendations for properties within or potentially within the historic overlay district. So, like, how how do we even go about talking to the planning commission? Yeah, that's I think not that's spelled out. Thing that must be outdated because yeah. it's not yeah. the process. And the last time, or just trying to picture the application in my mind, at the top of it, it, you know, there's certain things that would kick it into a type three, which would be the planning commission. There's type one, type two, that's all, you know, in house kind of administrative approval. So unless we got a specific application that was a type three or type four, type four goes to council, type three goes to commission. Mm -hmm then you know that's when we would need to exercise that but yeah. everything else below that is just in-house we would make a decision um and then it goes to the applicant so. i don't think we've done a type three or mm -hmm. four no. i guess it, from my perspective like i don't care if it's bylaws or however the process happens i just would like clarity and a process set out in advance so that we aren't building a plane as we fly if it comes up. Uh, so one thing we could refer, refer to, which is funny because in the other meeting I referred to us. Um, so on the museum committee, we just updated our bylaws and we've been putting together this, I don't know, an implementation plan. Is that what we called it now? We changed yeah. the name. <laughs> um, and the implementation plan is like kind of it's almost like an operations plan in a way of like, like it includes everything from like Maddie's pest collectors and, or what, how, you know, the process of like, which artifacts, how you deal with a fire, you know, an emergency situation and protecting artifacts, but also like kind of longer term, just like, what are the priorities of the, the museum and the committee and, you know, like in terms of what kind of activities you pursue or don't pursue. And so it's interesting because the bylaws are like a page and a half, like very short. Mm -hmm. And then the Im implementation plan is almost like a, more of a, a yeah, an envisioning and operations kind of document. And it's much longer. Uh, yeah. And so something like that, I don't know, it could be interesting. I don't know if that would address, you know, kind of more of that, the process of reviewing a, an application and like laying that all out and, um, whereas the bylaws could say something to the effect of like, you know, it needs to meet the planning processes as outlined in the development code, you know, like something very short 
and then we elaborate on what that means in the whatever implementation plan. Like we receive an application, we look for these things, we look to these design guidelines and the you know national standards and you know blah blah blah, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the history museum bylaws govern the history museum committee. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah not the process. I think what uh, Commissioner Josephson is saying is very important. That yeah. there needs to be something that codifies the role of the historic commission before we get to uh, actually having to make a decision or engage in that kind of mm -hmm. activity. Um, so there's clear differences between our roles on either committee or either commission. Um, I think there could be an argument for bylaws and mm -hmm. guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't really thought that much about it, but I'm certainly willing to entertain any ideas. Yeah, I guess that's what I was trying to say, too, is that we would have bylaws still that like basically establish the legal context for our existence and what our like defined role is, but not necessarily outlining the full process for like reviewing an application that comes in, right? But if it just says that clearly it needs to, you know, the historic commission is charged with, you know, reviewing applications as they come in and, you know, evaluating per guidelines established in the Springfield Development Code, done. And then the development code, you know, lists type one, type two, type three applications, what, you know, but we don't need to repeat all that in our bylaws, right? Mm -hmm. And in our guidelines slash operations plan, it could be like, well, if a type one application comes in, then you need to do all these things. And, you know, this is what you're looking for versus a type three application. And then you're reviewing for these kinds of things. And that's really like the, you know, when it comes across our table and we're not blindsided and we have like some sort of nice, our checklist and the document, the form that we'd come up with that like let us sort of give feedback and send it, you know, each commissioner could send the feedback in, you know, that kind of stuff can be in that process, I guess, mm -hmm. document, the guidelines document. Commissioner Yeah, I think this is the last thing that I'm going to say, but as to the, I mean, we've talked a lot about clear and objective today too. The OARs, though, apply clear and objective, not just to the standards, but to the process. And so I, I, at the end of the day, that's my main concern is making sure that we meet a clear and objective process um, to the extent that we must. Um, to fulfill our role. And is there an example of the process being defined in bylaws? Do we have, I have, I have to look, I don't know the answer to that. I'm just throwing it out there. Um, I wonder if one thing that might be helpful for me, <laughs> I don't know if it's helpful for anybody else, but to like pick, for example, the museum committee's bylaws and review them and have that be, or two different groups bylaws, I mm -hmm. think, um, and kind of review them and talk about what they are at our next meeting and what they're doing and not doing um, in that function and how we might want ours to be different and then really consider whether or not we want to use those or not. I feel like planning commission would be an interesting one to look at because they're making these kinds of similar you know, legal decisions basically around, I mean, we're not making the decisions, we're making recommendations to staff to make decisions, right? But planning commission is still like, you know, reviewing applications yeah. and going through kind of similar, similar tasks, I guess, that we do. Would the most useful examples come from this community already, or should we look for an example that applies to a historic commission in a different yeah, community? Cottage Grove has a historic commission. I think Salem's is also pretty yeah. active as well. Yeah, we could, I mean, they're not very long, right? They're generally really short, concise documents. They're so. probably on the internet, right? Yeah. <laughs> they're public documents, yeah. So maybe we could try to pull one or two other communities' examples together. I mean, I do like the idea of at least bullet pointing, mm -hmm. you know, our functions mm -hmm. and not getting too specific beyond the bullet point and saving that for another document. At least it's in the bylaws. Mm -hmm. At least that's something that we can point people to, mm -hmm. uh, but without having to over explain right. uh, ourselves. 
Well, especially because the code changes too, right? Like if we over explain the process, then as the code changes and the review processes change, then we have to go change our bylaws. All right. Um, so we have homework for next time. Well, um, is anybody able to pull example bylaws together and send them out to the group to review before our next meeting? And practice I can do that. skills. Yay, thank you. <laughs> Much appreciated. Um, awesome. We'll add that to our dinner next month. Um, I'm going to keep this moving along because it's our thing down to the end here. Um, budget update. There's, I don't have an update. We should pull our budget out and look at it closely. I still need to get accurate reporting of what's been spent mm -hmm. um, so that we're getting down to like final time. And um, part of that uh, we also have to update our progress report, which we're going to talk about later this week. So um, for our grant. Thursday. Yeah. I think we have that meeting. Yeah. I think so so um, we'll have more updates on that next month. Um, the We have a huge celebration, huge moment of celebration here um, for the RLS application. The contract was signed with <laughs> Thanks mostly to city staff who helped uh, push that through at the last minute amongst a bunch of other stuff going on. So um, that's really exciting. They're going to be down here. I already forgot the dates. May. Tour next week. Uh, wow. Monday yeah, and Tuesday. That's right. Yeah. Monday and Tuesday. Monday and Memorial Day. Wow, you're just jamming. I'm working on it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a consultant for it. No, so. <laughs> That's my birthday. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> but if it wasn't all, I'm going to go like like lurk behind them and watch it. <laughs> just I know. We talked about that. Yeah. But it's just uh, now, it's just like, get it done. Yeah. <laughs> you're not adding anything else to it. You can walk out there and see if you can find it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, notice mailer should be going out tomorrow. Awesome. So products. somebody drafted it. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. I just copied and pasted most of the like field work clause from the contract just to put it in what great. people should expect and bolded, you know, even work and stuff. So. That's so great. Yeah. So we had like a day turnaround on like, <laughs> we need to get a notification out to all the people. So thank you for that as well. Um, so everyone's going to get notified. They have a little map. Um, we could probably send that out so people know, but they're basically focusing on... Um, the north of D Street, I think it was. Yeah. Like, there was 150 assets and 76 of those for phase one is what they are yeah. uh, surveying. Yeah. And they're mostly primary contributing... Primary properties. contributing structures, yeah. So that was just something we had talked about with them originally. We just decided to... To roll with it, um, happy to get some progress on yes. this. Which firm did we go with? Willamette. Um, Willamette. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. My yeah. God, that's exciting. This <laughs> seems like a big Wow. Okay, great. So that is good. The other great news is that the ILS for the Jaco House is moving along, and I have an updated timeline for that from Shannon Sardell, who mm -hmm. is doing that for us. Um, at William Lane. Um, so we can loop that into our conversation and update with um, the, we just have to update the grant progress report because we didn't meet the original time timelines that they had wanted us to. Um, so hopefully that will all go smoothly. Um, other updates, I think, um, oh, the last thing I had on here that I'll add on to, and it probably isn't an update for, but the walking tour guides, um, I don't know if you have an update on that. I do now. Okay. Was I supposed to mail you something? No, I'm just behind. You. Okay. I, oh, I, I, yes, I, you I, emailed. I was like, I am the person who's behind in this case. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll add that maybe next month, and it's no pressure, but we'll just get that looped in on our agenda so we can have that not forgotten. Um, and any other commissioner updates about projects? Anything else? Yeah. Sure, Josephson. I'm sure as you all have figured out, uh, something's a little different this week. Um, I am now using uh, the name Elise and she, her pronouns. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. We've updated the roster um, and names will be updated going forward. Any other updates?
Anything exciting going on at Baby Climbs? I guess I have one small thing. So I, I'm working for ODOT now, which just started a couple months ago, but uh, I'm working for their ADA curb ramp program. Mm -hmm. And just last week, I got some initial information about what that program may end up working on in Springfield. So I don't know much yet, but I'm very excited by the, uh, excited to know that this community is in the queue and getting closer to having updated ADA infrastructure. Um, so I'll I'll keep an eye out and and I'm sure that discussions of like historic resources and collaboration between ODOT and the city will come about when it's time. But um, yeah, it's got me looking at every sidewalk and curb <laughs> ramp in the whole city, and and the work will probably just focus on ODOT's right of way and adjacent properties. But it's still got me looking at every little everything. <laughs> yeah, we got some historic sidewalks down in the Washington. <laughs> I wiped out on one of those one time. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, we'll see you all next month. Thank you for being here. Um, and stay tuned for some email updates coming your way. Don't forget the awards. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nominate. Nominate.